In this video, I'm going to do a case study on what I believe to be a failing hard drive that contains some of my important data. I'll be working with the smart CTL command to try and diagnose and evaluate the problem. Since hard disk failures are rare in practice, I felt it would be useful to make a video on this subject, even though I don't consider myself anywhere near an expert on the subject. The information provided by the smart CTL command is very cryptic and confusing. Most of what I'll discuss in this video is what I learned from the past couple days of research. If you consider yourself an expert on this subject, I'd be more than happy if you leave a pedantic and critical comment on this video if I say something that's wrong. Last night, I was browsing around some of my system log files for fun, when I noticed the following suspicious looking log statement. These log statements were found in var, log, syslog. In my case, most of my everyday files and git repos are stored on dev sdb. I went back and looked at some of the previous syslog files, and I found that this error message only appeared as recently as a week ago. The first time it happened, it appears to have sent some kind of warning message to the root user. Having said that, I checked the root user's email on this machine and I didn't see anything, so this must not be set up properly. If you want to see an overview of the smart monitoring data for your disk, you can use the smart CTL command with the dash A flag and then specify the device. In this case, I'm using sudo because this requires elevated privileges. Let's pipe this into less. The output starts with some general information about the device, such as the model number, firmware version, etc. Interestingly, it says that the smart overall health self-assessment test has passed. Scrolling down to the attributes section shows some more granular information about the device history. If you're watching this video, it's very likely that you're looking at something similar to this on your own computer, and you want the answer to one simple question. Is my hard drive failing or not? From the past couple days of reading up on this information, I can tell you that it's very difficult to know. Let's try to interpret some of this cryptic looking information. When you look at this information for the first time, the word fail will probably jump right out at you. You might even have a brand new hard drive, and now that you're looking at the statistics on it, you can see the word fail. What's going on? Is your hard drive a dud? As far as I understand, the way to interpret this column is to associate the phrase pre-fail with the attribute and not with the current state of your hard drive. The idea behind smart attributes is that there are many different attributes that different drives can support. The first column, ID number, specifies the ID number of that attribute. As you can see from this number, there are at least a couple hundred smart attributes. In this specific case, this hard drive only supports 19 of them. The attribute name is standardized and associated with the ID number. According to most of the random forum posts and wikis that I've read, these three numbers are generally a number between 0 and 100, although obviously some of these values are over 100. Most people seem to suggest that there's no standardized way of interpreting these numbers. The meaning of each number here has a different interpretation depending on which model number and vendor you use. For many attributes, a general rule of thumb seems to be that the higher number is better, and a lower number is worse. If my understanding is correct, the way to interpret this first attribute record is to say that when the value for the raw read error rate becomes problematic, this is an indication that the drive is in a pre-fail state. In my case, the threshold problematic value is 62, and the current value is 100. For this attribute, higher values appear to be better than lower values. So the value starts high and gets lower as the drive degrades. Therefore, this record is not an indication of poor drive health. This record, however, looks a bit more suspicious. This Wikipedia article was an excellent resource for trying to understand some of these smart attributes. Even though the output for the smart attributes for the current pending sector doesn't appear to be anywhere near the threshold, this is still concerning. Intuitively, the idea that some sectors need to be remapped because of instability seems kind of concerning. The wiki also suggests that this is a critical issue. Now, from what I've read online, a pending sector does not necessarily imply that there's a problem with the hardware. People suggest that if there is something like a power failure, and your computer shuts off in the middle of a write to the hard drive, 
then you can't have any expectation that when you read that same block that's partially written, that the checksums and all the integrity checks will come out properly. So in those cases, the data at that sector is lost, but there's no actual problem with the hard drive. So at some point, it's possible that the hard drive could overwrite the data at that sector. And if all the integrity checks are fine after that, and it's just an issue with the data being partially written, then theoretically, you can just overwrite the corrupted data, and the disk itself will be fine after that. But a pending sector could be a problem with the disk itself. The smart CTL command also gives you the ability to ask the drive to test itself. I first did this with a short test that only takes a couple minutes, and this completed without error. Then I did a more extensive and longer test that takes about 3 hours. This one failed with a read error. I then tried the same test again and it failed again at the exact same block. Therefore, I've come to the conclusion that this drive is not healthy and have already ordered a replacement. The command for issuing a short test on the drive looks like this. Let's do another test right now. The test results are not immediately reported. We can use the smart CTL command again to check on the status of our test. This line here shows the status of the test. There's still 90% of the test remaining. Now there's 30% of the test remaining. Now the test is complete. You can scroll down to this section to look at the results of the test. According to the man page, all test commands can be given during normal system operation unless captive mode is used with the dash C flag. It does say that this can degrade the performance of the drive while the test is running. In my case, I ran the test on an active drive that contains data while it was mounted, and I didn't notice any adverse effects to the data. It's interesting to note that even though two of the self-tests that I ran failed, the overall health self-assessment is passed. At this point, I've already backed up the data on this drive and ordered a replacement. Most likely, I haven't lost any important data since there are only 8 unstable sectors. For the sake of finding out what happens, I'm going to try and resolve the issue with these 8 remaining sectors. If these 8 sectors are mapped to files in the file system, this could represent data loss. Pending sectors can be resolved in one of two ways. Since they represent unstable sectors that couldn't be read successfully, a future successful read will clear their pending status. Another way to resolve them is with a future write to that sector. In this case, since the sector is being overwritten, it can be discarded and simply remapped somewhere else. If these unstable sectors are not an active part of the file system, they will simply be remapped when that part of the disk is used again. For the sake of this case study, I'd like to find out where those sectors are and whether they can be recovered. First, I'll try to resolve the pending sectors by reading all the data from every file in the file system on the offending disk. This find command will recursively look at everything in the current directory. For every node that is of type file, it will execute the md5sum command on that file. The results of all these md5sum calculations will be piped into a file that's located on a separate hard disk. This part of the command will redirect standard error to standard out so that all output is piped to the same file. The overall purpose of this command is to force a read for all sectors of all files in this file system. If some of the pending sectors are successfully read by this command, the number of pending sectors should go down after running this command. If instead we find error messages about read failures in this file, that means that the bad sectors are associated with files in this file system and we unsuccessfully read them a second time. If we don't find any error messages in this file, and the number of pending sectors doesn't go down, the conclusion will be that the bad sectors are not associated with the actual file data. It could still be in the file system or partition structure, or it could be in a completely unused part of the disk. Let's run this command and see what happens. This should take a while, Okay, so it's been a couple hours, and the find command finished running. Here's a grep command that I'm going to run against the file that contains the md5 checksums. This regular expression should match any md5 hash that starts at the beginning of a line. The p flag means Perl compatible regular expressions, 
and the V flag means to invert matches. So in theory, this grep command should print out any lines in the file that don't just have a regular hash. This should include any of the error messages. Apparently, this file doesn't contain any error messages. I also checked the file manually and did a few different kinds of searches to see if there are any read errors that I missed. Now, let's check the smart attributes again to see if the number of pending sectors has changed. Nope, still 8. Therefore, my conclusion would be that none of these unstable sectors were associated with file data in the file system. It's also possible that these unstable sectors are in the file system structure itself somewhere, in a way that's not very apparent. The next thing that I'd like to try is to create a complete image of the disk, including the unstable sectors. Before I do this, I'll unmount the partition to make sure nothing is writing to it. To create the disk image, I'll use a program called ddrescue. ddrescue is useful for copying data from failing disks, since it keeps a progress log that tracks all of the data that's been successfully recovered. It also includes a number of options for controlling how the data is read. This flag specifies that ddrescue should bypass the kernel's disk cache. This flag specifies to retry zero times after a failed read. In theory, after running this command, this should either clear the pending sectors, or it should give us some indication that there really is difficulty reading data from this disk. The resulting image file will be the size of the original disk, which in this case is one terabyte. In my case, this won't be an issue since my working directory is an external hard drive with a capacity of four terabytes. Now let's start the rescue process and see what happens. All right, so it's now the next morning. I let this command run overnight. It's been running for just over nine hours now. And interestingly, it does have one read error. So just as we suspected, there is some difficulty in reading data off this disk. The first pass of the DD command is going to finish in a few minutes. After that, we can go back and rerun this same DD command with the log file. That should allow us to save everything we've rescued so far and try and reread only the problematic areas. We are now at 99.6% rescued. So there's only a few seconds remaining. Okay, so it looks like DD rescue doesn't immediately exit once it gets close to 100%. The bad areas and read errors is going up. Interesting, we have a total of nine read errors. Okay, first let's take a look at the log file. So this is what DD rescue uses to keep track of areas that it's successfully recovered and areas that haven't been recovered. So it looks like there's only one small contiguous area on this disk that it wasn't able to recover. Now let's check the smart CTL attributes again and see if the pending sector count has changed. So the pending sector count is still the same. I can also see that the raw read error rate has changed from what it was before. Last time I checked, I seem to remember that this value was 100. I'm not really sure how to interpret this value, but I'm inclined to believe that the fact that it went down is a bad thing. Let's try to run the DD rescue command again and see if we can recover any more of those bad sectors. Okay, it looks like it just immediately exited. Let's try it again with 10 retries. So it retried 10 times and it did not recover any more data. So had those sectors contained important information, this is looking a bit more like a data loss condition. Let's run this again with 100 retries. It took about 40 minutes to complete and it did not successfully read any more data. So my conclusion at this point is, if there is data on these bad sectors, then the data has been lost. Because of the earlier test that I did with the MD5 checksums, I would also be inclined to believe that these bad sectors are actually not actively mapped into part of the file system blocks itself. So these are likely in unused space on the disk. So in my case, there's no actual loss of files, but if my hard drive was full, then I believe that I would have lost data. Another thing worth checking out at this point is to check the smart CTL statistics just to see if anything changed. So we still have a pending sector count of eight. And at this point, I don't think that this is ever going to be resolved from a read, but this could be resolved from a write. If we accept the idea that the data on these sectors is lost, and if they're also in unused parts of the disk, in theory, we should be able to remount the partition and then create a very large file that will hopefully overwrite these sectors.
Once we do a write to these sectors, the hard drive itself can conclude that these unstable sectors can be forgotten about. So what it will try to do is internally remap those sectors to some other part of its surface internally. And once that happens, I would expect that this reallocated event count will go up. So if I'm right about all of these assumptions, after creating a very large file in the file system, this should go up to eight, and this should be cleared down to zero. So first I'll remount the partition. So we can use this dd command to fill up the hard drive. dd will do a copy between input file and output file. dev0 is a special file in the system that just gives you an infinite stream of zeros. And output file is just a file here in the current directory called big file. And we set the block size to one megabyte. Okay, let's let this run. And we can use this watch command to monitor the progress. So eventually, once the hard drive is full and we've used up all the available space, the dd command will encounter an error, but we'll still have that big file. So by that point, all of the unused sectors on this partition should have been overwritten. So I'm still in the process of filling up the hard drive, and I was taking another look at the smart attributes just to see if they had changed, and I happened to notice that there are a whole bunch of errors in here that I didn't see before. Here's a detailed description of these errors. It says here that they occurred at this hour number, and in the output here you can see that that's in the last hour. So these errors either occurred when I was using the dd rescue command, or they may have happened just now during the process of trying to fill up the disk. 100% in use, zero bytes available. And here's where the dd command exited because there's no space left in the device. Now let's check to see if any of the smart attributes have changed. Okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. According to this, the current pending sector count is still eight. I was expecting this to go down to zero and this to go up to eight. So based on this, I would have to conclude that this is either not immediately updated or the dd command that we ran to fill up the disk didn't actually overwrite the bad sectors. So either they're not on that partition or maybe they're something like part of the file system structure itself. Also, after looking at the error messages a little bit more closely, I do think these are from when we ran dd rescue. The command here says this was from some kind of read operation, and looking at the exact number of errors, that seems like it could be explained by the number of retries that we ran with dd rescue. So if there's eight bad sectors, the last set of retries was 100 retries, so that would account for 800. Before that we ran 10 retries, so there's 80, and the first couple passes would account for the extra nine. Just to be sure that everything from our dd command is actually written to disk, let's use the sync command. And it doesn't look like the pending sector count has changed. Looking down here at the logical block address, where the problematic read happens, we have this value. And if I run this command, this shows me information about the layout of those partitions. So this is the location of the problematic read. And these are the sector boundaries for this partition. So this is the one that I just filled up. And assuming that I haven't mixed up the block sizes, this would be somewhere about three quarters of the way through this partition. So I'd really have expected that it would be overwritten by the dd command. So from the dd rescue log, this was the region that it couldn't recover. And if you take this hexadecimal address, which I assume is a byte offset, and divide it by 512, you get this number. And in the smart CTL log, that error message that we saw was complaining about this address, which I assume is a block offset. And it's interesting to note that these two numbers are the same. So it makes sense that the smart CTL log would be complaining about a location that is identical to what couldn't be recovered in DD Rescue. And the base 10 equivalent of this block address is here. So since I don't really care about this drive or the data on it anymore, for fun, I'm going to try and run this command, which is going to do a low level block write to this block. And we'll see if we can get any of those smart attributes about pending sectors to be updated. Just to make things clear, this command will write zeros to this block on the disk. So if there's anything important there, it will be destroyed. And if it's part of the file system structure, then that will probably corrupt your file system. So this is not something you want to do on data that is important to you. 
All right, here goes nothing. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, this message is not surprising. I guess it's good that they include this. All right, let's try this again. Okay, it says it wrote to that sector. Now let's check the smart CTL statistics. All right, look at that. That seems to have cleared the pending sector count. And we now have a reallocated event count of one. So for fun, I guess it's worth doing another smart test just to see what comes back. So I'll start that now and check in in a couple hours. It's been a couple hours and the smart test is completed. So let's take a look at the results. Here we go. So this one also failed. And interestingly, it failed on the next block. I find that interesting because the HD param command that we used supposedly would have only cleared one block at this address. So it makes sense that it would find an error at this address. But if we check the attributes, before we issued that command, there were eight pending sectors. And, and now there's zero. So clearly, it's able to do a read failure. But in these statistics, nothing shows up. I do find it strange that there is only one reallocated event count. I would have expected there would be eight. Something else very interesting is that the raw read error rate is back up to 100. So you'll recall before, this was down around a value of 79. And there is some uh, really large values over here for the raw value. So this gives me even more questions about the exact meaning of these values. This must represent some kind of moving average or maybe the last hour or so many reads or something. I wasn't able to find any good documentation on these values. And everything online seems to suggest that they're very vendor specific. Some people suggest that these numbers are almost meaningless unless you understand the nuances of that individual model. I suppose if you work in a data center and you have thousands of the same drive, then it's probably a lot easier to compare this. But since this is a one-off hard drive, I really don't have a reference point. So since the most recent test failed at the next block, I'm gonna go ahead and try to use this command again to zero out the next block and see if that changes any of the smart attributes. Okay, that's interesting. There's still no pending sectors again, and there's no more reallocated event counts. So just to see what happens, I'm going to go ahead and zero out eight sectors starting at that location just to see if that will make the test pass. And let's see if this updated any of the smart attributes. Okay, still no more reallocated sectors. Before I try running the entire test again, let me try reading the sectors and see if that updates any of the attributes. Nope, still the same. Reallocated count is still one, and there are no more current pending sectors. Okay, let's run another long test and see what happens. All right, it's now a few hours later and the extended test completed without error this time. And looking at the attributes, I don't see any changes. And now just for fun, I'm going to run DD Rescue again. I'll try to complete the recovery of the image just to see what happens. This won't recover the original data because we already overwrote whatever was at those sectors. But if this process fails for any reason, then I'll get more information about the state of the drive. Oh, it looks like I need to add at least one retry. All right, I think it completed. Let's check the progress log to be sure. Okay, it looks like it was able to finish the recovery process, but that's not a surprise because we explicitly wrote zeros to those sectors. So at this point, this basically concludes our analysis. Uh, there really isn't much more to investigate. Even though the information here seems to suggest that we could keep using this drive, I plan to replace it anyway because I don't trust it anymore. In conclusion, we did identify that there were a few sectors on this drive that could not be successfully read. Uh, we tried to read them 100 times with DD Rescue and were unsuccessful. In the end, I feel kind of unsatisfied in that I don't really know what was stored in those sectors. So we filled up the hard drive. That did not clear the pending sectors. However, when we read through all the files in the file system, I didn't see any errors. So that seems to imply that those sectors did not belong to the data blocks of any of the files on that file system. It's possible that the sectors were part of the file system structure itself, uh, maybe the partition table, 
or maybe I did some math wrong and maybe they were actually in that other uh, old swap partition.